thanks very much for that very interesting uh, talk, uh, Jeremy. Um, I just want to just mention briefly, I mean, your central point was that Section 4 of the Fraud Act could do the job. Um, that would involve, uh, because of the identification principle, uh, somebody representing the directing mind of the company, basically a director, being dishonest. So I yes, just don't yes. see that that could, could get you very far. Um, I understand that Keith may have uh, may try that one on with his opponents in civil litigation, but it wouldn't it wouldn't wash with me um, too too much. And it's the identification principle that is the big problem uh, here. And it's very interesting. You mentioned Circo Geographics, the company that that who's pro, who's who reported their profits in an inflated way was Circo, not Circo Geographics. So what happened is that Circo were making a certain amount of profit, say it was 28% um, margin. And, it, and they were concerned that if the margin was that high, the Ministry of Justice would want to renegotiate or want some rebate. Yeah. So the allegation was that they um, created a charge from Cir Circo Geographics, a management charge of a half a million pounds every month, which had a considerable effect, as you can imagine, in reducing the profit of Circo. But all of that was, and, and then they presented the figures to the Ministry of Justice, saying, hey, look, we've only made 15%, not 25%. Mm -hmm. And that was, a, that was said to be a false representation. The difficulty was that the people that made the representation were far, far below the directing mind level. So Circo themselves weren't part, were, 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 couldn't be prosecuted. And, and one will notice that the, the, the party that was prosecuted was Circo Geographics. The, the party that had actually given the invoices, the allegedly sort of false invoices to Circo to reduce the profit. So they, they had to sort of come round this and in order to get a corporate liability, they had to go for the subsidiary company that hadn't even presented the figures in the first place. And a lot of people would say that the reason Circo, the reason this was agreed is because Circo was so keen. Simply, I mean, it was, a, it was a, they were very keen in getting the future work. Which is why, when you look out outside in London here, you would be ever allowed of our houses. We see Circo vans going around, you know, transporting prisoners, and Circo are doing a lot of work. Because my belief about it is that they were put under pressure to agree the legal fiction um, and, and, and pay the fine in order to get future work from the government. So, to cut a long story short, I don't really see that Section Four would would work. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, the big thing that people looked at in terms of the identification principle and the problems was was um, was libel, um, and it was very very noticeable that when the libel case happened and that it was announced, you know, you had the CFC, CFTC, and the DOJ took settlements against against banks and the FCA, but the serious fraud office on the criminal side were nowhere to be seen. And that was because of the identification principle. And that is the classic case which would call out for corporate liability for failure to prevent fraud. The fraud was taking place. It benefited Barclays, for example. And yet Barclays, all they had to deal with was the regulatory FCA fine. They had criminality in America and regulatory problems in America, but no criminal problems in the UK. So, um, you know, I think obviously worth looking at Section 4, but I don't think that that would... That, you know has has been it clearly hasn't been used in that way mm -hmm.